Hello, wonderful person. It's time for 3A Atlas update, the comet that we discussed quite extensively in some of the previous videos in description, and the comet that's now finally visible again because it has now left the region from behind the sun and is slowly moving away farther and farther until one day in the future it basically leaves the solar system once again. And well, if you watch some of the earlier videos, you probably already know that this is a confirmed third interstellar object with the estimated age of at least 7.4 billion years and has already shown us quite a lot of very bizarre and difficult to explain emissions. Something that we're going to be discussing today again because some of these emissions have been observed once again. And we actually do have some really cool discoveries including the first detection of radio leaves which despite some press claims was obviously not produced by aliens but by something much more mundane. But before we discuss this comet, I actually wanted to briefly mention something else because press has now started to make a lot of claims about comets that are completely unrelated just by mistake. And first, this object, mostly because some of the press articles started to claim that the Comet 3 I Atlas broke apart. And well, the Comet Atlas did break apart but it's not the same comet. This one is known as K1 Atlas and is an entirely different object discovered by the same telescope referred to as Atlas. And well, that's the one that broke apart near the sun. And so if you actually want to read about the other comet C, 2025 K1 Atlas, the link is in the description. And here's actually a really beautiful image of this comet captured by Demetrius Katavinis. And then we also have this object, Comet Beresov. C2025V1 Beresov, and actually discovered by the same astronomer who discovered the second interstellar comet, Beresov, as well. And this one was exciting because it was assumed to be almost interstellar, but just wasn't. There are some minor similarities in the orbit between these objects, but they're still entirely different objects, and you can learn about this one in the link in description. But just to summarize, these are not related objects. And these two other comets are coming from the outer solar system and not from the interstellar space. As a matter of fact, they resemble every other comet we've seen so far. But when it comes to the three atlas, well, the real discovery here is really in regards to some of the recent analysis in terms of the emissions coming from this object and the core scientific consensus that's emerging that the data collected by telescopes like the James Webb and even the orbiters around Mars seem to all suggest that this is not really the pristine messenger we were hoping for. We've actually briefly discussed the study in the previous video, but in a nutshell in the last few weeks, most of this new research seems to actually suggest the same. All of the information gathered about the surface of this comet seems to be fundamentally altered or basically overwritten by billions of years of exposure to the galaxy itself. And the stuff we're seeing being emitted is not ancient material from the star system itself. And this is not just an interesting discovery. This is a very important paradigm shift. It basically suggests that many interstellar objects like this one have been dramatically altered by the radiation from outer space, the cosmic rays, and do not really show us the true picture of the original star system. And so even though astronomers were hoping that the analysis of this comet would actually tell us about what kind of a star system it might be, which might even help us discover where it's located, what they seem to have discovered instead is that this is unlike any other comet we've seen. Here the spectroscopy which focuses on analyzing the light, specifically focusing on the Sphere X mission, and the observations from the James Webb pretty much definitively confirmed that the material that's coming from here has been pretty bizarre. But exactly what does this mean? Well, First of all, the amount of different molecules that was detected was entirely different from what scientists expected to find. For example, one of the first discoveries was the extreme enrichment in carbon dioxide. As a matter of fact, when comparing the emissions of carbon dioxide to water for this comet, the ratio was 7.6, basically 7.6 times as much CO2 as H2O. But why is this a major discovery? Well, because in a solar system, we never see these ratios. In a solar system, the ratio is practically the opposite. It's something like 12, which means that comets usually produce way more water compared to CO2. And this means that this is, for some reason, the most carbon dioxide enriched object ever recorded. But it's not just CO2. It's also carbon monoxide, CO. Here the ratio is not as high, only 1.6, but still higher than expected. 
And so because of this unusual dual enrichment in carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, at first it made absolutely no sense because we don't really expect to see this from any star system anywhere out there. We don't expect any planetary disk out there to contain anything similar. On top of this, the comet was also ridiculously red. In essence, some of the more recent observations that tried to analyze the color spectrum discovered that it seemed to have a very specific red spectral slope, making it one of the reddest small bodies known to us. Now, because we've seen something very similar in the outer solar system, and because we generally know how this forms, scientists were then able to create models and explain these anomalous properties as a result of a major transformation by GCRs, galactic cosmic rays. Or just to rephrase, this extremely high energy particles constantly striking this comet for billions of years very likely converted carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide and actually created this relatively thick layer of approximately 10 to 15 meters. That's entirely different from what it used to be when a comet just formed. And this was then confirmed by various lab experiments when researchers tried to replicate galactic cosmic rays striking ice and discovered that it was also turning red over time. In this case, it turns red because of very specific organic molecules. And so with time, the synthesis of these very complex organic rich crusts covers this whole object with this very red and super thick crust. And in some sense, it kind of starts resembling a very dark red walnut. But crucially, the recent calculations of the comet's erosion during the passage through the inner solar system show us that the material lost before it reached the closest point to the sun only involved approximately one meter. And that means that everything we observe so far originated predominantly from this galactic cosmic ray process crust. So essentially, we have not seen any pristine material yet and may not even see it unless for some reason the comet breaks apart and reveals what's inside. And for astronomers studying comets, this is profound. It means that the effects of this very long journey basically tells us about the chemical reactions across the galaxy and not the pristinas from the birth of a star system. So essentially, this is a really good example of what happens to objects if they travel through space for a long time, but just does not tell us much about other star systems. But at least we got some really good pictures from a lot of different probes. For example, here's a recent picture from the TN-11 mission by China from a distance of about 29 million kilometers. And here's one of the more recent pictures released by NASA, captured by the NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that shows us both the trajectory of the comet and tells us a little bit more about the size of the coma. And in this image, we see something entirely different. Here we see hydrogen atoms from three different sources that were captured by the MAVEN spacecraft back in September of 2025. And here we're actually looking at ultraviolet emissions, but as you can see, one of the emissions is coming from Mars. And so it's actually three separate things, the comet, interplanetary hydrogen, and hydrogen from Mars. All three are emitting a little bit of ultraviolet. But I guess one of the more exciting observations was this, the detection in radio waves. This was the first radio signal detected from the comet by the Mercat radio telescope. And here this once again confirmed that this is a cometary object. Know that we needed this confirmation, by the way, and that's because the telescope was able to detect very specific radio emissions coming from here that were created by hydroxyl radicals, or essentially leftovers from water molecules, natural products of water molecules breaking down from the sun's UV light, and is a classical sign of an active natural comet. And so here this detection helps us put the rest a lot of speculations and of course helps us learn a little bit more about its composition. But right now this was just a detection and not a calculation of anything specific coming from the comet. And so basically here we just know that it emitted very similar radio emissions to other comets, but not how much. On top of this sound, the observations from the European Space Agency have now achieved a major victory in tracking the cometary path by using the data from ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter. They were able to triangulate the position of the comet with so much precision that they can now predict its trajectory with a tenfold accuracy. And this will definitely help us establish its pathway in the future, and more importantly, will help us track it better with some of the future telescope missions by combining all of these telescopes and by having them work together. This actually also serves a very important purpose that was not clear until now. 
This was an exceptionally valuable test case for planetary defense, being able to use a lot of spacecraft that were not even designed for tracking asteroids and comets in order to conduct precise astrometric measurements and in order to find out if any object out there may potentially strike our planet. And because all of this was done so quickly and only took a few weeks, this actually proves that right now we have enough technology to predict a path of any potentially dangerous object before it even comes close to hitting the planet. And by the way, if you actually want to learn more about planetary defense, check out some of the previous videos on the DART mission or that time when NASA collided an object with an asteroid to see what happens in one of the links in the description. But the key scientific question now is, well, what actually happened to the comet when it passed close to the sun? And was the intense solar heating enough to cause the erosion of this very thick cosmic ray crust? And if it did, then we now might start seeing some of the more pristine material coming from inside, which will be absolutely crucial in order to learn more about the star system. And even though some of these ISA spacecrafts, such as the Jupiter IC Moons Explorer, did pass through the cometary tail and collected some of the data, unfortunately, we're not going to get that data back for at least a few months. Right now, scientists expect that the data will be returned in February of 2026. But since we also now have Vera Rubin Observatory that just became operational, we expect to actually see up to 70 such objects every single year, assuming the predictions are correct. And so for all we know, maybe next year in 2026, none of this is actually even going to be unusual. These are going to become very common objects, and scientists will be detecting them pretty much every single week. Nevertheless, 3II Atlas has redefined what we thought about interstellar objects and has definitely helped astronomers to test all of the tools we have. Not to mention that we now also have this new hypothesis referred to as GCR processing hypothesis, which suggests many of these objects are probably covered in this bizarre crust and also created a lot of collaborative opportunities for NASA, ISA, and other international teams to track and analyze this object together by using top-of-the-line space surveillance and planetary defense systems. So in that sense, this was actually absolutely groundbreaking. But obviously, the observations are still not done, and we're still going to be discussing this quite a few times as this comet is slowly speeding away from the sun and as it hopefully opens up and reveals something else. But by then, we might actually find more interstellar objects and might even have new data to compare this with allowing us to see how these objects actually differ. And so hopefully, by next year, the story here is going to become not really about alien spacecraft or green men trying to visit our solar system, but about slow, dynamic, and powerful forces of physics that shape every piece of matter in the galaxy. And it's really because of objects like this that we're going to be learning more about what happens out there outside of the solar system. And so once we do, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. While most people are scrolling past space headlines, something very real is quietly unfolding above our heads. Today's update is about two objects, one from outside our solar system and one so large it barely fits the word comet. Let's start with 3I Atlas. Here's one of the clearest images we've seen so far of 3I Atlas. This is real data, real photons, not a simulation. Look closely at the structure. You can see the coma glowing around the core and a main tail flowing backward like we'd expect. But the strange part is right here, that sharp forward-facing streak pointing ahead of the nucleus. In older images, this feature was faint, almost invisible. But here, it's bright, defined, structured. Now, this was not a quick snapshot. It was captured using 57 stacked exposures, each 60 seconds long, using a ZWO ASI 533MC Pro camera and an ASCAR 71F telescope. That's almost an hour of total light collection just to reveal what you're seeing right now. This is the original source post that shared the image. And this matters because it shows the wider context, the sky conditions, the equipment, and the process behind the image. This wasn't taken in a controlled lab. This came from real sky, real tracking, real calibration. Now, here's the key detail. That forward-facing jet doesn't look chaotic. It doesn't look random. It looks focused. And that matters because interstellar objects aren't supposed to behave like this so clearly. Now, this is where things get serious. This isn't a normal picture. This is raw telescope data. At first glance, it looks like noise. 
just stars streaking through the frame. Um, but look right here, that dark circular blob in the center, that's 3i Atlas. Now the same data after heavy processing, rotational gradient filters, larsen china techniques. This is what astronomers use when they're searching for hidden structures inside a comet's coma. That tiny bright point in the center, that might be our first real look at the nucleus. In this version, the nucleus becomes even more visible. The noise fades, the structure sharpens, and the bright core stays fixed. Look at how the stars streak. Now look at the bright point in the center. It doesn't move with the stars, it doesn't smear, it stays locked to the object. That's important. Multiple processed frames. Same bright point, same location. That's not noise, that's signal. This is the source post discussing these frames. And notice the wording. They don't say confirmed, they say may show. That's real science. But when multiple independent frames show the same structure, it stops being coincidence. It starts becoming evidence. And what that means is simple. We may be seeing the solid heart of an object that came from another star system. But 3i Atlas isn't the only strange object out there right now. Let's shift focus to something even more mysterious that's quietly moving through deep space. Now look at this. This is not 3i Atlas. This is an artist's concept of C-204UN271, also known as Bernardinelli Bernstein. And this thing is enormous. Current estimates put its size at around 150 kilometers in diameter. That alone makes it one of the largest comet-like objects ever observed. This isn't artwork, this is real observation data. On the left, the real telescope image. In the middle, the coma model. On the right, the isolated nucleus. Officially, this object is classified as a comet, but it doesn't behave like a normal one. It has already shown outbursts of activity far past Saturn. Scientists have detected carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and even ammonia coming off its surface. That kind of activity shouldn't happen this far from the sun. Right now, it's near the orbit of Uranus, and it is slowly moving inward. But here's what makes it truly strange. At its closest approach, it won't even cross Saturn's orbit. Its perihelion is expected to be around 10.95 astronomical units. Most comets dive deep into the inner solar system. This one doesn't, which means it has probably never warmed up before. That means its internal material is ancient, untouched, extremely volatile. And that means we have no idea how it's going to behave. It could stay calm or it could erupt. Massive outgassing, huge jets, non-gravitational acceleration. And because of its size, any activity it shows happens on a completely different scale. This is considered the second largest comet-like object ever observed. And whatever we decide to call it, comet or object, one thing is clear. It's massive, it's active, and it's slowly moving inward. And right now, it's one of the strangest things we know about moving through our solar system.